One of the things that, uh, the, the most common ways that people fish out here during the summer, of course, is going out and fishing the flats. We're always trying to find fish around the, the drop-offs, the edges of the flats. So I wanted to show you two different ways to think about drop-offs inside imaging. A drop-off will appear differently depending upon if our boat is on top of the flat or if our boat is off the flat and we're sort of paralleling it, driving next to it. First, let's think about the instance where the boat is up on top of the flat. Here would be the top of the flat. You can see there's a dark stripe here. That's the drop-off itself. And then the bottom picks up again as we move to the left of that dark stripe. Okay, so that would be the deeper water just off the flat. Now this stripe is there because as sonar energy leaves the transducer and is imaging the bottom, there is essentially a blind spot. A part of the bottom that can't be imaged by the side imaging beam, right? We can image this part, we can image the deeper water, but we can't see the drop off itself. That's this part right here. So when we're on top of the flat, we'll see the edge of it as a dark stripe. Now that's different if we're on the deep side of the flat. Okay, the whole drop off will appear differently. Here, if we're standing, or if our boat is positioned over deep water, we'll see the deep water imaged here, we'll see the shallow part of the, or the top of the flat. Over here, this is actually the shoreline here. And then the drop off itself, the edge of the flat, will appear very, very bright. Almost like it's too hard. We're sort of expecting the bottom to be soft, but that bottom appears really bright. The reason it appears really bright is that because the bottom is angled, it becomes very efficient at sending sonar energy back to the transducer. The more sonar energy that goes back to the transducer, the, bottom, the, bright, the brighter the bottom will appear. Okay, so depending upon if we're on top of the flat or, or in the deep water next to it, we can still image that drop-off area. It just appears differently depending upon if our boat is shallow or if our boat is deep. Let's look at some rocks. Now rocks are one of the first things that people get good at identifying in side imaging because they are, they look like rocks. There's virtually no interpretation associated with figuring out what a rock is. A little round ball of earth, right? Something that's very hard, rocks appear bright. They generally appear small unless we're looking, we're talking about a Volkswagen sized rock and we'll look at some of those in a little while as well. Um, so they're bright, they're small, they're round, and the larger the rocks get, the larger the shadows they cast. Okay, tiny little rocks that are close to the bottom, they'll generate a sonar shadow. As the rocks get bigger, we start to see more and more shadows associated with them. This is the edge of the rocks up off Pike Point in the northwest corner outside of Garrison. Okay, the transition between the rocky area and sand is unbelievably sharp, right? Now you, you can probably see this if you've driven over it with your traditional sonar. You're going along and it's 14, 15, 16 feet, all of a sudden, poof, now it's 18 or 20 feet. Well, that very sharp transition is not just in one spot. It extends all around Pike's Point. This particular pile of rocks is a wing dam from down in the Mississippi River. Water is flowing in this direction. This is the wing dam, right? A man-made bar of rocks that deflects current out into the main body of the river. And behind the wing dam, we can see a series of vertical stripes. This is where water, turbulent water, as it's flowing, flowing over the wing dam, has scoured out little stripes right behind the wing dam. Okay, so this is often how a wing dam will appear inside imaging. Again, it's a big thing full of rocks. They look like little round walls inside imaging. Many people right now are fishing the weeds up here. This is a couple of images of weed beds. We've talked about the weeds up here on the north end. I always think about weeds looking like little, little uh, patches of cauliflower or broccoli. They have that kind of uneven mottled appearance. Distinct weed clumps will show up just like this, like a little, like a little bunch of cauliflower, a little head of cauliflower. Here is a distinct weed edge that goes all around this shallow bay. Now, this is a shallow bay where people launch their boats. It is possible, using side imaging, to take that entire narrow shallow bay and figure out the entire anatomy of the bay just by driving down the middle. All right, we can go and then if we wanted to, if we wanted to figure out where the weed edge is, mark GPS waypoints all around that weed edge. Mark GPS waypoints on those individual weed clumps and come back and fish them very efficiently because now we know exactly where the weed edge is. We know exactly where the isolated clumps are. We can drive right to those spots 
and fish them with GPS precision. And again, we get all that information by making one pass on the middle of the bay. Not driving zigzag back and forth, hoping you run over a weed patch and figure out where the edge is. One time, and then we start to fish. Let's talk more about edges. So, of course, it's very common at this time of the year, while we still have a relatively distinct weed beds out here, to fish inside and outside weed edges of the uh, back in the weedy bays. So what I have here is a section of water that is full of weeds. Those weeds are in relatively shallow water and they're separated from dark, uh, from the soft bottom, dark uh, open water area. Right, so down here on the bottom, we have a whole bunch of weeds, a really thick weed bed. As we go towards the top of the image, notice that all the cauliflower patch is gone. Now I just have plain boring bottom that's dark. Okay, so open water, soft bottom because the bottom is so dark like that. And all along the edge, it's very easy to determine exactly where the weeds stop growing. So again, if we're trying to figure out where the outside weed edge is, we don't need to drive a serpentine pattern back and forth, dropping waypoints every time our depth goes from 8 to 15 feet, to determining where the, uh, you know, that there would be the outside edge of the weeds is. Instead, make one pass and see exactly where the whole weed edge is, that whole outside edge, and then drop GPS waypoints all the way around. So now I have a perfect representation on my chart view of where that weed edge is. So I can come back and fish it with precision. Not guessing, gee, am I too close to the weed bed so that my buddy who's over here on this side is going to get his crankbait hang up all the time? Or should I be 10 feet over and now I have all of my baits exactly in the strike zone, just outside of the weed, but not so close that I get hung up? Easy to make that sort of determination by making one pass with the side imaging fishing system. Now, not only is the outside edge important, but we also know that there are certain times of the year, and this happens to be one of them, when the inside weed edge is important as well. Here I have an image that has shoreline on this side, open water between shore and our cauliflower patch, another weed bed over here. Okay? Just by paralleling the shoreline in this case, I can determine exactly where the inside edge of that weed bed is. So there's no guesswork involved. Now I know exactly where I want to go if I want to fish the inside edge. So here on the left hand side again, uneven cauliflower patch, those are the weeds. Over here I have shore. Between the two, of course, I've got the fish zone where I want to be fishing. Right? I want to be fishing in an area that is between the inside edge of the weeds and the shore. Now I know if I've gone and marked this inside edge with a series of GPS waypoints, I can fish this in a serpentine pattern, make those traditional little cuts and turns that we all know can help to trigger fish. And I can be in an area that is weed free. I know I'm not going to get snagged, I know my buddy's not going to get snagged. All of that during the course of a, of a night's fishing or during the course of a weekend's fishing means one thing, it means more fish, right? And that's why we're here. So this is technology that helps us catch more fish. There's something in here that I wanted to point out if you have good eyesight, you can see that there's a line that is running through this weed bed. In fact, it runs all along the length of the weed bed. I have many, many images of this particular line because it kind of stuck in my head as being relatively important. What do you think that is? It's not a power cable. No, it's not a flooded fence. What is it? Trot line. No, it's not a trot line. This, I, I'll tell you that I collected this image when I was up, uh, up on the Lax filming for, uh, for a DVD this past June. It's a gill net. It's a gill net. Okay, now, this is a DNR gill net that was set in a weed bed. And with the DNR, there was three, in this particular area we were fishing, there were several of these uh, gill nets set right in the middle of the weed beds. The DNR fisheries guys were going and running those gill nets constantly. They'd run one, collect all the fish, tag them and release them. Then they'd go to the next, the next one, collect all those fish, tag them and release them. They're doing a walleye survey. <laughs> now, that's a gill net. Think about the composition of a gill net. You've got you know, cord that's that big around or smaller at the top, and a bunch of monofilament hanging down to another cord that's on the bottom. Side imaging is sensitive enough that I can identify things that are that big around. Easily, with no problem, crystal clear. Okay, that's, that's no, there's no photoshopping here, I haven't manufactured this. 
I took it off of my unit, and I'm showing it to you exactly the way I collected it. So if you can image things that are that big around, you can image anything that you're interested in, that you're interested in catching out there on the lake. Okay. Now, I promised you before I would give you an example of how I use some of this technology for different applications. Here's one of the ways I use 360 imaging while I'm trolling. Okay, so while we're petering along at a mile and a half, two miles an hour, I can deploy this 360 imaging transducer. It will constantly be looking all around the boat. In this case, my range is 120 feet, so 240 feet circle all the way around the boat. As I'm using 360 imaging here, I'm paralleling a weed bed. We've gotten used to looking at images like this. This is a big, thick weed bed that really hasn't started to peter out yet. Now on the left side, we've got open water. And I'm just trying to run along the outside edge of this, of this weed bed. Now instead of wondering when this weed bed is going to make a turn, either inside or out, right, I can see those turns traveling down the 360 imaging view as I'm fishing my way down this weed bed. Okay, so I can anticipate exactly when that weed bed is going to turn this way and I need to turn to the left or it's going to bend the other way and I need to turn to the right. Again, to keep my baits out of the weeds and in the strike zone for as long as possible. Okay, so 360 imaging is not just a technique for still fishermen, even though there are some wonderful applications for still fishing that I'll show in a little while. It's also a tool that we can use right now to help keep our plugs uh, unfouled out of the weeds and ultimately, as I said before, catch more fish. That's the whole reason we're here. Let's talk a little bit more about edges. I showed you some uh, wonderful weed edges before, inside and outside. Here's a great way that we can identify uh, gravel to sand or gravel to mud transitions. This is a rock pile that is just west of the Red Door. Here I have rocks all over here. You can see I've got some great big boulders. I've got soft bottom and slightly deeper water, but not super, super deep. And between the two, I've got this perfect transition area that we all know can be so productive at different times of the year, including this one. So I have rock all here. As we go towards the top of the image, we've got that soft bottom open water area. And separating the two, we've got the transition zone. Again, these are things that we can go and mark with GPS waypoints all along that edge. So if I want to focus my fishing time on the most productive areas, it's easy for me to do that. Easy for me to fish right along the edge, or fish shallower, in this case in the rocks, or fish a little bit deeper, because maybe we've got no wind, and we've got bright moon, and the fish is pushed off. Okay, so again, very easy to figure these things out and use these tools to help us catch more fish. So now it's quiz time. Now we're going to try to figure out everything that this image has in it based on our little introduction to interpreting these images so far. Okay, so what I'll tell you is that this image was collected by driving in this direction. And the hint that I'll give you is I've, I started deep, I ended deep, and I went over something shallow. Okay, so what does that shallow spot have going for? It's a road bed, right? No, it's not a road bed. What are the kind of things that are on that shallow, that shallow little bar? There's rock. There's a whole bunch of rock that is on the edge of the bar that I drove over first. Okay, and there's some real distinct round shapes here. I promised you a Volkswagen size boulder, Volkswagen size boulder. That's one of them. You can see that it casts a tremendous sonar shadow that goes all the way to the end of the side of it. So I've got a rock bar, a rocky part of the bar that sort of that sort of serves as one fence, one edge of the bar itself. Okay, what else does this bar have going for it? It's got weeds. The whole top of the bar from side to side is weeds. There's one giant weed bed sitting on top of this bar. What else does the bar have? What else, what else can we learn about the bar by looking at that edge? Hard bottom. That's right. We've gone from soft bottom areas, okay, muck. Now the bar itself is sand. Hard bottom. Sand with this row of rocks along it. Okay, so some spots, like this one, have everything. They're the smorgasbord. Right? But by making one pass over that bar, look at all the information we've determined from that one pass of my boat over the bar. It's, it's, gone, it's shallow, surrounded by deep water. Okay? It's hard bottom, surrounded by soft bottom. It's got a big row of rocks, 
So if a guy wanted to go and throw tubes or hair jigs for smallmouths, maybe we'd start on this side. If you wanted to cast for muskies or whatever else, largemouth that are associated with the weed bed, we've got acres and acres of weed bed for us. But you can also notice that we've got a real hard edge to that weed bed. So if we wanted to slip bobber fish, wanted to catch, try to catch panfish, we can mark the exact edge of that weed bed, park just outside of it, cast right to that outside edge. Look at all we've learned about that weed bed in five minutes from one pass in my boat. Okay, so again, I'm not making serpentine passes. I'm not trying to figure it out by interpreting a sonar that I don't really understand very well. Instead, I'm just looking at a picture. Oh, look at everything I know about this bed now. Now I come back and enter this bar now. Now I can come back and fish it very methodically from a perspective of being completely informed about what's beneath the 